Dr. Mike here, the People's Podiatrist. We're gonna need some special props for this one. Props! So we're gonna be coming to you and breaking down. Many of you may have heard the news that on Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021, uh, Tiger Woods was uh, involved in an uh, accident. Tiger Woods, reading from the New York Times, sustained a leg injury, a serious leg injury. After his SUV he was driving struck the median of a road in Los Angeles County, it crossed over into the opposite lane of traffic, rolled over several times before coming to a stop in a grassy area several hundred feet from where he had been driving, the authorities said. And so um, the emergency workers were rushed to the scene after about 7 a.m. Pacific time and took Woods, 45 years old, to the closest trauma center where the golfer's manager said he had undergone or gone into surgery. The authorities said that Woods was in serious but stable condition at the Harbor UCLA Medical Center and that his injuries did not appear to be life-threatening. The chief medical uh, uh, LA County Fire Department said Woods, quote, had broken bones in both, both his legs. All right, and then later on that day, uh, on Wednesday, a statement appeared, it says, uh, from his, Mr. Woods' Twitter account, that says saying that uh, he had undergone a long surgical procedure on his r lower right leg and ankle, and that he was currently awake, responsive, and recovering in the hospital, okay? Those were the earlier earliest reports. Uh, you fast forward, so many of you heard those, it was like a shock to the world. Um, kind of thing and you were praying for Tiger, especially because there was a history there uh, of, of accidents uh, before. Uh, ultimately, some days later, many reports came out uh, about the extent of some of those injuries. And in particular, um, there's an ESPN um, and it goes on to say that Tiger Woods is in, Tiger Woods is in good spirits after follow-up procedures for leg injuries. Okay. So reading from that uh, ESPN sourced, Tiger Woods is recovering and in good spirits after undergoing follow-up procedures in his leg injuries on his leg injuries Friday morning, according to a statement posted on his Twitter account. Woods had his procedures at Cedar Sinai's Medical Center in Los Angeles, where he was transferred Wednesday night following the single vehicle crash the day before that left him with serious injuries uh, to his right leg. Tiger and his family want to thank you for all the wonderful support. It says Woods was 45, was removed from the Harbor UCLA Medical Center, which is uh, located away. They said, on Tuesday, one of the doctors reported that Woods suffered from multiple open fractures to his lower right leg and a rod placed in his tibia and screws and pins inserted into his foot and ankle during emergency surgery. So a bit more extensive than the initial reports thought to reveal says two separate sources told ESPN on Wednesday that Woods suffered an injury to his talus bone, which connects the bottom of the to the, the bottom of the lower leg to the top of the foot. The bone is a pivot point for motion. Sources say that screws were likely inserted into the area to help it heal and if all goes well, eventually allow for normal movement. Normal. All right. Okay, so we're going to be breaking down some of that uh, injury, at least if, if these reports hold true. So in, in lay terms, so kind of brother, uh, uh, cousin, uncle, sister, brother can, uh, mother can understand it, right? Um, and so it looks like he's in in in, in, in some good good care, but uh, ultimately, just want to kind of give a, a, a breakdown of such a thing. Uh, let's take a look first. All right, and we're gonna need to pull out our props for today. So this is the model of a foot. We're gonna 
uh, a breakdown, this thing line by line with the Tiger Wood injury. Uh, it mentions the talus in the article, ESPN article. It mentions a rod and, and the tibia. And uh, just to give you an idea of what they're talking about, whenever people think about the ankle generally, they think, they think about the two uh, uh, bones on the side, either side, here and here, right? But ultimately, the true ankle bone, the talus bone, is the bone in the middle. Think how the wrist goes around. That's a, a flick of the wrist, but the analogous motion in the uh, foot, you would understand what that's like and what the ankle is responsible for. Think kind of rolling over on your ankle. Not so much a break or anything like that, but um, to again, just break it down, we'll be explaining it uh, a bit. But I wanted to talk or start with uh, one of the mentions in the ESPN, uh, ESPN article about the term, it says open fractures to his lower right leg. Uh, and he had a rod placed in his tibia and screws and pins inserted into his foot and ankle during an emergency surgery. Okay. Um, and so with an open fracture, it automatically becomes a really, really big deal. Uh, and in general, an open fracture is just is a, a fracture where the bone penetrates the skin. Basically, it breaks through the skin. When you have a broken bone, um, and, it, and it, it, it breaks through the skin, and it's considered, quote, dirty by the nature uh, uh, of such an injury, and it needs to be attended to uh, emergently. So um, they often are referred to as compound fractures. Um, the bone penetrates the skin. Uh, many football fans might have known um, the Joe Theismann injury. They also know the Alex Smith injury. Those were um, compound uh, uh, fractures that happened on the football field. Um, and so this was a big deal, which is part of what happened to a golfer uh, in the event that uses his legs a lot, like Tiger Woods. And so um, usually these injuries are, are obviously considered contaminated and if they have gone without treatment for six to eight hours they are considered infected okay open fractured are considered open fractures are considered a medical emergency and patients should be admitted to the hospital in the end okay and it goes over several classifications for open fractures but just in the idea of just get to give you uh, a general idea of how serious this was and remains um you know that's the start of it in any event um with, with this breakdown so it also mentioned comminuted open fractures uh affecting both the upper and lower portions of the tibia and fibula bones were stabilized by the by inserting a rod into the tibia right so that's the the tibia that's this bone here, okay? Think of the inside of the ankle. That's the big bulge in the inside of the ankle. The fibula, that's this bone here, right? The bone on the outside of the ankle. You ever roll your ankle, right? The ball on the out, ball, bulge on the outside of the ankle. But uh, a compound fracture, a comminuted fracture happened at this area of his uh, uh, leg bone, which is actually part of the, the shin bone. It extends into the shin and, and becomes part of the knee. Uh, a joint right in the knee complex and so um, that needed a rod to be inserted through the uh, tibial shaft in order to stabilize the open fracture or the bone that was sticking through his skin as a result of um, the accident and uh, again it automatically becomes a big deal typically when you deal with uh, um, uh, infected or, or dirty fractures or open fractures of, of any sort magnitude there's a level of care that has to be taken and again emergent level where uh, you kind of automatically know it's going to be more than just one procedure or more than just one um, you know surgical procedure or thing you would have to do to attend to that fracture whether you talk about stabilizing it to begin with um, you're talking about um, washing it out several times making sure it's clean uh, going back into the uh, operating room um, you know days after in staged planned procedures because you can't just close over a, a dirty or contaminated wound like an, a compound or open fracture okay all right and so um, just to break it down further, uh, I thought this was interesting. Again, uh, this actually mentioned specifically in the ESPN article that came out a couple days later, three days later, additional injuries to the bones of the foot and ankle, again, were stabilized with a combination of screws and pins, right? Trauma to the muscle and soft tissue 
of the leg required surgical release of the covering of the muscles to relieve pressure due to swelling. This was a throw in sentence in the ESP article. I think it instantly becomes a big deal if it is, is true. And it looks like it was um, reported right by the doctor uh, from that, that, that uh, article. Um, and um, that brings to mind an, another thing that they did not name by name, but it brings to mind an emergency situation, something called compartment syndrome. Okay, and so in compartment syndrome, what happens is increased pressure in one of the osseofascial components, uh, compartments. So osseous is bone, uh, fascia is a thin covering that kind of separates um, uh, bone and muscles into compartments, so to speak, right? So an osseofascial compartments of the leg or foot resulting in closing off of blood supply. An acute ischemic, or oh, that's a uh, blood circulation, an acute ischemic episode ensues resulting in necrosis, that's death to the tissues, okay? Necrosis of the muscle and nerve, followed by replacement with scar and subsequent contractures, okay? So it can get really, really bad. Actually, it can result in some really horrific uh, outcomes. Um, so compartment syndrome can occur in the foot, but is much more common in the leg, where there is more muscle that can be absorb that can absorb fluid. Uh, it requires rapid diagnosis and treatment to avoid irreversible nerve and muscle damage. Acute compartment syndrome left untreated for more than 12 hours usually usually results in irreversible muscle or nerve damage. Okay, so he was in some really, really serious waters. It's, um, again, if these reports are true, hard to say whether that was from the initial injury, likely, uh, versus, um, you know, any post-surgical things that they may have, may have done. Uh, uh, but again, um, signs can be really severe pain, um, even a, a loss of, of kind of normal nerve sens sensation, and uh, it's often caused is trauma, most notably crush injuries, okay? So it makes sense here, but I definitely just wanted to draw that to light. And it talks about the treatment in such a thing for a compartment syndrome, um, which again, is not out there in an official capacity, it's just this ESPN report, uh, but an open fasciotomy, all right? That's when you release the fascia, that, that connective tissue that separates the muscles, right? Because the fluid is building up in these compartments, almost like a pressurized, think pressure cooker or anything that you might do under pressure um, that gets released, okay? Think of balloons, almost, right? Not that, not that easy, but that's the thought process, right? You're trying to release the pressure in that area. So you, you, you pop it, you, you, you uh, incise the fascia, okay? You cut it, right? Um, the thin connective tissue, all right? Um, and, um, and I said, open fasciotomy should be performed as soon as possible to prevent necrosis. Remember, necrosis is death to the tissues um, and contractures. It can actually make your muscles and all of these things contract or change um, uh, uh, as a result of, of such a thing. So um, compartment syndrome, all right? Um, pretty much long incisions are made uh, into, it, it speaks to like the leg or the area into the compartment um, and left open to depressurize the compartment, right? Imagine you're placing a slit in a slender uh, balloon. It doesn't pop, but it just kind of teases out uh, air um, and, and wounds are often left um, to close secondarily in a matter uh, of, of however long it takes. So this is where these staged procedures automatically built up into having um, different things necessary to, to, to treat a thing above and beyond the open compound fracture with comminuted um, uh, leg ankle bone uh, as well as a rod being placed in it. Again, a big, big deal. It does not appear, um, at least by these reports, that he was ever in any real grave danger of losing the leg, although um, you're definitely not out of the woods, no pun intended. Uh, for football fans, uh, fans, again, the most recent injury is the Alex Smith. It looks, look how long it was and lasted. He had to have grafts and things of that nature um, 
to recover from such an injury and is kind of just getting back. So it makes a big deal uh, with regards to Tiger Woods injuries, okay? All right, so to further break it down, um, it talks a bit about two separate sources told ESPN on Wednesday that Woods suffered an injury to his talus bone, um, which connects the bottom of the lower leg to the top of the foot, okay? Uh, and again, the bone is a pivot point for motion, all right? Everything you pivot off of literally comes from that, that talus bone. It's very important part of foot function and, and overall gait or the way that you want run and walk. Oftentimes, um, excuse me, any um, issues can be pointed with some of excess or decreased motion uh, at the level of the talus bone uh, with regards to foot function, okay? All right, so again, that dome-shaped bone kind of down in there, and it's often even injured on uh, ankle uh, rollover injuries, all right? It, the main ligament, one of the easier ligaments that done that is, uh, it, it, that is injured in such injuries comes off of that bone. Um, uh, so again, just to kind of give you an idea of the extent of um, the injuries, um, when it talks a bit about uh, screws, and it just mentions likely, down and now it seems to be getting into speculation, but screws being likely to be replaced or inserted uh, into the area of the talus. The talus bone is notoriously, um, you know, not great with blood supply at an area um, where it normally uh, is broken. Uh, and so if with that injury alone, all right, it, it can become a, a tougher thing to heal. Now we're gonna give Tiger as a world-class athlete the benefit of the doubt um, that does work in people's favor, but he has had multiple um, surgical procedures for other things unrelated to this. Um, you know, the back being most prominent, okay? So there's an injury history there just in general, so this doesn't help, right? Um, and I won't speculate with regards to his overall future um, with, with golf, he has to be, um, you know, get clear uh, uh, for life uh, to start, right? So whatever it is, it's a long road um, in, in my best uh, understanding of it all. But to speak to that point, um, I just wanted to, again, break that down, uh, give you an understanding of what's, what that's like, that, that, you know, the function of the, the talus bone um, and how important it is to overall foot function, all right? Mm -hmm. I mentioned, I, I actually, uh, my face, I, I scrunched my face up when it says, and if all goes well, eventually allowing for normal movement. Uh, listen, I mean, the fact that there are any injuries of any sorts, that the movement of the talus has so many variables uh, to it, um, and any time there is a fracture, especially comminuted, comminuted um, is, is multiple pieces. We didn't get to, we didn't talk a bit about that. Uh, so, so when you have like actually a fracture line and you know, one piece end on end, uh, think splintered or, or multiple pieces, trying to kind of put the pieces, think a puzzle, right? Put the puzzle together. Um, a lot of times you just get the best fit it's gonna be not normal by design. So I know they say normal, there's a range of motion that is normal, um, but the question becomes, what's the extent of the injury? How successful was the uh, procedure? We're gonna give Tiger the benefit of the doubt of sports, health, and nutrition. Um, and so, you know, prayerfully he's a, a quicker healer, but again, a long road to recovery. We've seen how that works um, with world-class athlete like Alex Smith in the NFL, starting quarterback in the, quarterback in the NFL. Um, at some point with a similar, uh, it was a career ender, um, these injuries many a generation ago for, for athletes and people of the like. And so uh, speedy recovery for Tiger Woods. Um, I don't even think there's such thing, but, uh, and again, I hope that I was able to shed some light and break it down so that you understand. Hey, hit me up for whatever topics you would like to see discussed. Um, next, if you got anything in particular, just let me know. And it's Dr. Mike, the people's podiatrist, your favorite foot doctor, coming at you with the breakdown. Tiger's Taylor's.